So because of the lockdown situation, a lot of people are turning to bikes for exercise and as a mode of transport. This means more people on bikes, amazing. But this also means more beginners. So I wanted to highlight in today's video a few things which I wish I'd known when I started riding. Number one. Buy your first bike from a bike shop, a local one to you if possible. If they're a good shop, they're gonna help you choose the right thing so you don't end up making the mistake of buying the wrong thing online and then bringing it in because it doesn't fit properly or work properly. Most local bike shops will be really helpful. Look for the smaller independent ones if you can. They'll probably be more friendly than a bigger chain shop. My studio is actually in a bike shop right now, owned by my friend James. This is what he thinks. Someone buys a bike from you instead of online, what they're gonna get? A smile from me. We get first free service because things like, you know, you get like a, like, nuts and bolts settle in, cable stretch. That's what activates warranty on most bikes. We actually provide a service for direct to consumer customers where they pay 50 quid and we build the bike, they have the bike delivered here, we build the bike for them and then we offer them free service afterwards. Cool option. But I mean, you know, I guess buying a bike from a shop means that you've got someone to go back to when it goes wrong. You've got all the technical supports, warranty issues, compatibility of, of parts. Like we quite often get people who turn up and they, they buy a frame from us and then they, they turn up with a group set and it's got like a Campag rear mech and a SRAM shifter and Shimano front derailleur and it's like, oh no, this isn't gonna work, is it? That's a slight exaggeration, but we do get that. You're paying for expertise and knowledge and understanding rather than you know, just paying for some kid to package it in a warehouse and send it out to you. When you get a brand new bike, all the cables are gonna stretch and all the parts that are nice and tight will start to settle in. Most local bike shops, if you buy a bike from them, will offer a tune-up service so you can bring it back in a few weeks later and tune up all of those things free of charge. In most cases, that alone will cover the discount that you might make buying a bike online. So go to your local bike shop, support them. You'll be thankful that they're there when you need them. Number two. eat more. Cycling is very low impact and it's very easy to go riding for two or three hours even when you're new to it. It's not like going for a 20 minute jog, you need to take food with you and you need to eat it regularly as well as keeping on top of drinking. Eating regularly and small amounts is key. Try and aim for every 20 minutes to half an hour, having a bite of a bar, a banana, jelly beans, a bit of serene. I've done a video on this. I'll uh, link down below, nutrition. Don't feel like you have to do this while riding. If confidence is an issue, you can definitely just stop by the side of the road have a bite to eat. It might feel unusual at first and quite difficult to eat while you're exercising, but the more you can do it, the better you'll get at it. If you don't eat, you're gonna experience a thing called bonking. Runners will call it hitting the wall. It's not a nice place to be. If you're a regular viewer of this channel and you've bonked before, let us know in the comments what it's like. It's not nice. Foods you should be looking to take with you should be all high in carbohydrates, so think sugary stuff. But don't be afraid to put a bit of squash in your drink as well. If you have to drink your calories, do that. You're still gonna get trim, fit and healthy, even when you're eating on the bike. And if you do eat properly, you're gonna get more out of yourself and more out of the session that you're doing. Number three. Here in the UK, our weather isn't perfect for cycling. For a lot of the year, we're gonna be in winter kit, but even in winter, you see a lot of people riding with their knees out. Cycling is not like running. You don't work out your temperature by adding 10 degrees or whatever the funny rule is. You can get really, really cold while cycling because you're moving faster. So you've got the wind chill to contend with. So proper kit is really important. You see a lot of people riding around in shorts. If it's 15 degrees or less, I would say at least wear knee warmers. Knee warmers and leg warmers are fairly cheap and they're small enough to put in your pocket. So if you leave the house with them on, you can always take them off again. Cycling kit can be expensive, but you definitely get what you pay for. When you're choosing kit, look at layers. So think adjustability. You don't always have to wear a really thick winter jacket. You can go gilet, jersey, base layer underneath, and that'll cover a vast array of riding conditions. You can then adjust your temperature on the fly with your zippers, definitely the way to go. Number four, you wanna make sure your bike fits. Or well, the rule I like to go by, fit first, by later. Now it doesn't have to be the most comprehensive bike fit in the world, but it does help if you get the right frame size and paying a small amount for a bike fit will save you money further down the road if you get into it more. You do have to be careful who you take your advice from, make sure it's a reputable bike shop and they should have a pretty good idea. To put it into perspective, when I bought my first proper bike in my teens, I was on a 56 centimeter frame. That's what the bike shop recommended to me. I now ride a 51. That's a lot smaller. So find a shop you can trust or take some advice from a friend who really knows his stuff. We see this trend with people coming in here with the wrong size bike and it's always too big. And I, uh, we feel like the key to it is that sizing charts and geometry charts are incredibly misleading. Like there's a certain 
uh, there are a couple of brands, on, online brands actually, but I'll cite one in particular whose medium bike is enormous. I mean, look for example, it's a brand that we sell, and their medium is like a 56 and a half. It's, it's huge. I mean, I would ride a small. Um, and so you've got anyone that would, you know, take, uh, you know, consider themselves as a medium. Like I wear a medium t-shirt, for example. I would automatically assume, like logic would dictate, that I would ride a medium bicycle. And in most brands, I probably would be. But there are certain brands, like Look, whose size structures I find to be quite misleading. I can't iterate enough how important it is to fit first and then buy a bike based on those measures. And I think one other thing, the, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't that. Bollocks, it's gone. Last tip from me today is gonna to be in two parts. First, join a cycling club. This is gonna let you meet other riders that are enthusiastic about cycling as well. So it will help you get excited about your new hobby and it will help with motivation when it comes to committing to group rides and that sort of thing. You'll also probably end up meeting riders who are much more experienced than you are. So you're gonna learn a lot from them, whether that's local routes, which you can then use yourself later without them, or skills that are harder to read up and learn about yourself, like group riding etiquette. It's way easier to just Join a group ride with people who know what they're doing and you end up learning off the back of it. Now, part two to this one, I realize not everybody has access to a cycling club depending on where you live in the world. But the last piece of advice here I would say is get a coach. If you're serious about it, that's the way you're gonna make progress the most quickly. You can find paid coaches online, discuss your goals with them and work out what you wanna do. Or a coach might just be a friend who you ride with a lot and a person you can discuss your goals with and they can give you feedback. It's really valuable to have someone look at your training as a whole who's not you, because you can be very biased sometimes and trick yourself into riding too much or too little. There's a lot of psychology involved in a sport like cycling. So don't be afraid to talk about it with a coach or friends. So there are my top five things I wish I'd known when I started cycling. If you're new to cycling, feel free to put any questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Equally, if you're an experienced cyclist and you want to put any tips in the comments section for other people, please go ahead. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and see you soon.